Get snow. It's going to feel like it when those uh, light rain showers come down at that hour of the night. You know, we see it every year. Despite the weather, boaters head to the Ohio River. In fact, the marina at Waterfront Park is full right now with Thunder boaters reserving their spot for the weekend. WHS 11's Bobby McSwine and photojournalist Nelson Reyes spoke to the U.S. Coast Guard and hit the water as well to show you how to be safe. While everyone's attention will be toward the sky Saturday night, the U.S. Coast Guard sector, Ohio Valley, will make sure all goes according to plan down below. The Coast Guard says there are several things you must do before hitting the water Saturday, including wearing a life jacket. And checking your boat. To make sure you have all the proper gear, uh, make sure your boat plug is in so you don't start taking on water. And despite the celebratory nature of Thunder over Louisville, just like you shouldn't drink and drive on the road, Lieutenant Steve Lighty reminds people. Don't drink while you're out on the water. Uh, to make sure everybody has a safe Thunder. Lieutenant Michael Frank Rose says the most common mistake he sees boaters make. Individuals will anchor during the fireworks show and forget to either turn their boat off or leave it running to ensure that their battery is charged when it comes time to transit out of the area back to the boat ramp. As for a challenge the Coast Guard has faced in the past, communication. It's because different agencies use different frequencies, but recently we've been able to come together and get on the same frequency so everyone can talk to each other. Now the 20 odd agencies assisting the Coast Guard will be able to coordinate from all vantage points. So what should boaters expect? The plan is the same as last year. Boaters cannot anchor past the Big Four Bridge. A no entry zone is set from the McAlpin Lock and Dam to 200 yards upriver of the Big Four. And we just appreciate everyone's cooperation to heed those uh, warnings and advice to make sure everybody has a safe thunder. And safety doesn't stop once the final firework goes off. Don't try to rush back to the marinas after, just take your time. And make sure you have navigation lights. Despite the rigorous planning that goes into making Thunder safe on the water, the Coast Guard still plans to enjoy the beauty in the sky. I enjoy the fireworks, the, the boating, and obviously spending time with families and friends. In Louisville, Bobby McSwine, WHAS 11 on your side. And a reminder, the Kentucky Derby Festival has created a very special moment coming up Saturday night. This will happen 30 minutes before the fireworks begin, honoring the victims of Louisville's two mass shootings. It'll start at 9 p.m. Saturday night following the air show. The air show will have just ended, and then there will be a special fireworks salute just after 9 to remember those lost in the two mass shootings, those impacted by gun violence, and our first responders who helped save lives. The Big Four Bridge will also light up in Louisville's official colors. They are blue and gold. And then the crowd will be asked to light up their cell phones to show that we are Louisville strong. Now we know Thunder is a long standing tra tradition for so many of you in Kentucky and we want to hear and see your favorite Thunder moments so far. Go ahead and text us your pictures to this number at WHAS 11 and tell us your favorite part of Thunder to 502-582-7290. We'll share them right here on the air. More news tonight at five. The projected Republican frontrunner in the race for Kentucky governor is calling himself a fighter in his latest campaign ad. You may have seen it already. Attorney General Daniel Cameron drawing from a moment in 2020 when protesters lined his front lawn in eastern Jefferson County demanding charges in the death of Breonna Taylor. Isaiah Kim Martinez interviewed Daniel Cameron today talking about that new ad. Isaiah it was very to the point and what message is he trying to send? That was a tense time back there and back then. We all wondered if he even still lived in that house. Absolutely. Essentially his firm stance, Doug, on law and order, even in the face of a social justice movement right at his doorstep. He brings back clips from when a sea of people gathered uh, in front of his Graymoor Devendale home calling for accountability. They tried to intimidate me and my family. I stood strong then and I won't back down now. That's why over 100 and today Cameron talking to me from inside that very same home where he still lives. Later in the ad, he touts support from 100 law enforcement leaders across the state. Is that I'm a fighter and I'm going to do what's right by the laws of Kentucky. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that I stand firm for what is right here in the Commonwealth. 
And in my interview, he doubled down on his plan as governor if elected to put a KSP post in Louisville to combat its violent crime, a proposal that's immediately ignited jabs thrown between Cameron and Kentucky's current governor, Andy Bashir. And Doug, we'll hear from Governor Bashir and a couple political analysts about what this all means. Big picture coming up right here at 6 o'clock. We'll also discuss the latest polls and whether these numbers, Cameron's lead, holds any weight in this case. Why does he want a KSP post in Louisville? Now, we do have them around. They're close. They're in E-Town, Frankfort, and uh, also in uh, Oldham County. We talk about all the officers short, at least with LNPD, 300 officers short in this case. You can only assume in this case that Cameron wants just more patrols, more people, more police officers in Louisville, and he believes the KSP uh, post like we see in many other areas, Hardin County, one quick example, would, would do just that. You also talked to political analysts at UK and U of L. Very interesting what they have mm -hmm. to say. We'll hear from them tonight. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Isaiah. Well, these are the other four GOP candidates hoping to clinch the nomination next month. Kentucky State Auditor Mike Harmon, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Kelly Kraft, Kentucky Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles, and the Mayor of Somerset, Kentucky, Alan Keck. Tonight, the nation is awaiting another potential landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision on abortion access. The high court is expected to hand down an order on the abortion pill before the midnight deadline. Here's ABC's Justin Finch with more from Washington. Less than one year after overturning Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court once again debating a case involving abortion rights in the U.S. The FDA first approved use of the abortion pill Mifepristone back in 2000 and since 2016 expanded access to the pill, including via mail delivery. Though this particular application is abortion, I think we all should be concerned if a federal agency is just ignoring the law and violating the rules. The anti-abortion group Alliance Defending Freedom challenged the FDA's Mifepristone approval, arguing the agency did not properly consider the drug's potential health risks. A Texas federal judge sided with the group, leading to conflicting rulings and legal challenges, prompting the Biden administration and the drug's maker to seek emergency Supreme Court intervention. The White House and many Democrats are encouraging the high court to uphold FDA approval of Mifepristone and not take steps to restrict access to the drug. If the court should decide that it has superior scientific knowledge without any benefit of research or trials and the rest, we have a real problem in our country. The CDC reports Mifepristone is used in more than half of U.S. abortions, and the Justice Department says more than 5 million women have safely used the drug. Justin Finch, ABC News at the Supreme Court.